Hello, and welcome to the Grant Budgeting Guide. This video serves as a guide for developing an accurate, detailed, and financially responsible alumni grant proposal budget. Alumni grant funding is available in two categories. Group grants of up to $3,000 for team projects with at least one other alumnus or alumna. Project teams may include non-alumni. There are also individual grants available for up to $250. These grants are for small-scale projects by an individual alumnus or alumna or for professional development opportunities. As part of the application process, you will complete a chart with one line for every project expense. While all grant budget charts look a little different or use different terms, the information collected is generally the same. Let's look at the components of the budget chart. Category. These are your broad expense buckets such as transportation, food, or venue. Description. This is a brief description of the expense. Narrative. This is a more detailed explanation of the expense. This is also the place you want to show your math to explain how you've calculated the total amount requested. Quantity. Here you indicate the total number of units for your requested expense. Units may be the number of items, people, days, etc. There are many different possible units. Unit price. This is the price for each individual unit. Grant funds requested. This is the amount you are requesting in grant funds to pay for this expense. Cost share. This is the amount of the expense that is paid for through another source or donated for free. And the total is the amount requested in grant funds plus the amount of cost share that you have. So what is cost share? Cost share could be goods such as equipment, furniture, the venue, or for longer term projects, maintenance and utilities, or even refreshments that people bring to your meetings for the group. People, staffing, or professionals who volunteer to support your project and do so for free. They do not receive an honorarium. Services, such as construction and renovation, printing, public relations and promotional activities, graphic design, or social media marketing. These are only a few examples. There are many other kinds of cost share and in-kind donations that your project may receive. Cost share makes your proposal stronger and more competitive. In a strong proposal, the grant applicant has engaged his or her local community to gain project support in the form of goods and services, or venue, manpower, or other donations. Projects with zero cost share, funded 100% by grant funds, are not the most competitive applications. When you get something for free, you must account for what it would have cost if you had to pay for it. The amount must be included in your budget chart and accompanied by a letter of support in most cases. Original letters of support should be provided with an English translation, if the original is not in English, and should specify what kind of support is being offered and the monetary value in US dollars of this support. For more information on letters of support, I recommend that you watch the proposal writing video. There is a right and a wrong way to approach your grant budget. Oftentimes, we see alumni approaching their budget like this. Hmm, I have $3,000 maximum that I can receive for my grant. That's $200 for supplies. $2,800 remaining. Now, $50 for water. $2,750 remaining. Okay, what next? Do not approach your grant budget like a trip to the supermarket, simply tossing items into the basket until you run out of money. This may seem counterintuitive and 
absolutely unheard of. But don't start your budget with money in mind. So what's the right approach for a grant budget? The resource-driven approach. First, determine the resources you need, then create your budget. Here are the steps for building a strong grant budget. List all the resources you believe you need for your project. Do not even think about money yet. Now, categorize your resource list as follows. Items that are critical, as in your project cannot be successful without them. Items that are moderately important. And items that would be ideal but possible to do without. Now stop! Walk away from your list and go research the actual costs of your project resources. Do not guess the costs on your grant budget. After you've done your research, complete the budget, adding costs to each of your project resources. I recommend you complete your draft budget in your own spreadsheet. Then you can transfer the data to the chart in the online application later. Don't forget to include all cost share or in-kind donations after you research the value of those as well in the cost share column of your budget chart. Now, it's time to do the math. The total doesn't reach the maximum amount that you may be awarded? Great! You're showing your funder that you are a responsible grant applicant by only asking for what you need. Does the total equal more than the maximum allowed? Time to adjust. What costs can you eliminate or reduce? Or are there other sources of cost share in your community that you haven't thought of yet? Let's practice building a budget. My project is a three-day workshop to train 40 high school and university students how to teach English to elementary school children in their communities. I have carefully thought out and done price research on every resource that I need, and I have, in cost share, commitment from a local school to provide training space and the use of the school's projector and computer for the three workshop days. I also have an experienced trainer who is willing to donate four hours of her time, as well as $50 worth of refreshments donated by a local supermarket. What I need is transportation for the project leaders and for a supplies transfer to the venue, workshop supplies and materials, more money for refreshments because $50 isn't enough for 45 people for three days, and funds to cover the bank transfer fee. So let's build our budget. Starting with the first expense that's in the transportation category. That expense is bus fare for the project leaders. Notice that I have indicated the mode of transportation that our team will use. This is very important. Without this information, the project evaluation team cannot assess if you are using a reasonably priced mode of transportation and whether the amount you are requesting is reasonable. Now I indicate in my narrative a detailed explanation that this is the project leader's bus fare to the venue on three training days. Note that I have given specifics on where and when, and I have broken down the math. Two people times three days equals six round trip rides, or units, at four dollars per round trip ride. My quantity is six, because my unit in this case is a round trip ride. The unit price equals the cost of one individual unit. As I don't have cost share funds for this line item, the total goes in the grants fund request column. And there is zero cost share for this particular line item. So our total cost is $24. All right, let's keep building our budget. In the next line item, we have transportation 
in the form of a taxi ride to deliver supplies to the venue the day before training. Note that I have indicated that the taxi ride is to deliver supplies. This clearly explains why I am taking a taxi because the most cost-effective way, a bus, does not meet the project needs for this activity. I have many supplies to deliver, so I need to take a taxi. Our unit is one taxi ride at $10 unit price, $10 in grant funds, zero in cost share with a total of $10. Our next three line items are supplies for flip chart paper, markers, and pens. You'll note I've provided additional information on the third supplies line item to explain what unit I've used. I need pens for a total of 45 staff and participants, but pens come in boxes of 10. Therefore, I am asking for five boxes, with the boxes being my unit. I also need to do some printing. You'll note that I'm not requesting to print huge quantities of materials at a significant expense. I am printing only what I need to conduct three group work activities during the workshop. I will have a computer and projector. I do not need to print everything. It's better for the environment and more financially responsible not to print a large amount of materials that are likely to be eventually thrown away by participants anyway. Building the budget continued. Next, I enter my venue, which I am getting as cost share. King Elementary School will provide three days of free training space, and that value is about $50 per day. Notice that I have indicated the organization that is providing me with the free venue. This equals zero dollars requested in grant funds and $150 in the cost share column, as this will be completely funded through cost share. Next, my trainer, Mary Ball, will also provide my project cost share through four hours of training at a value of $20 per hour as cost share. Note that I've put my trainer's name in the budget. Also note that I have communicated with both the school and the trainer to find out what the value of the free venue and training that they plan to provide. Refreshments is my next line item. Note that I have done my math to provide the per participant cost of the refreshments that I am requesting. You'll also notice that I have partial cost share here. $50 of my refreshments cost is paid for through in-kind donations from a local supermarket. Therefore, my total grant expense for this line item is $270, with $220 requested from grant funds and $50 in cost share. Next, the elementary school will provide me use of their projector and computer for the three days of my workshop, providing me with another $75 in cost share. And finally, I have added the bank transfer fee to get the funds from my local program office to my bank account. There are items that grant funds may not be used for, including alcohol, the purchase of computer or technology equipment, alumni salaries or honorarium. This also includes alumni who are not on your project team. Essentially, if someone is an alum, they may not be paid under any circumstances. Gifts or charitable donations of goods, materials, or money. Alumni grant funds are intended for the implementation of projects organized and developed by alumni, not for donations. Also a note on gifts. This includes anyone associated with your projects. No gifts to beneficiaries, trainers, or volunteers will be approved. Grant funds also cannot be used for political activities working for or against a specific candidate or party. 
And I would go a step further to note that alumni projects of this type can never be supported by the program, no matter the funding source. Also, your budget may not include a just-in-case or contingencies line item. It is your duty as the applicant to carefully consider your needs and thoroughly research the cost of every project resource in your budget. There are also another set of requests that we scrutinize heavily and may ask you to remove from your budget. There are items that require strong justification and no matter what cannot make up more than 30% of your budget. These items include t-shirts, bags, banners, printed promotional materials, construction materials, including paint, trees, and plants, durable equipment and furniture, or printed certificates. I would like to stress that the Alumni Grants Program rarely approves t-shirts, bags, banners, or printed promotional materials. Before asking for funds for these items, be sure that they are vital to the success of your project and that you have explained in your proposal why these items are essential. Another note on durable equipment and furniture. If you are asking to purchase an item that will still exist, that will not be used up during the course of your project, you need to explain the sustainability. Who will take care of it when the project is over? How will it be cleaned and protected? We also scrutinize requests in which a significant percentage of funds are requested for fees paid to individuals for professional services. We encourage alumni to plan projects that are in their realm of experience or expertise or for alumni to be creative in their pursuit of no fee services. The Alumni Grants Program cannot fund extensive professional fees for trainers, speakers, photographers, videographers, or other professional services. We suggest relying on your team's expertise, seeking services from within the YES Alumni or USG Alumni networks, or searching for qualified individuals who are willing to either fully or partially donate their time or services to participate in your project. In some cases, a reasonable honorarium may be considered if it is relatively low cost or low percentage of your budget, vital to the success of your project, and no fee services cannot be required. Also note, if you are requesting funds to pay an individual for any service, their resume must be provided. If they do not have a resume, you must provide a detailed description of how they are experienced and how they are qualified to assist. Project team travel accommodations and meals. We expect alumni to choose their project team and project location with cost in mind. If half of your budget goes to meals, travel, and accommodation for you and your team to hold a project, for example, 100 kilometers from your home, that's not a very strong proposal. The largest percentage of your budget should benefit direct beneficiaries, not go towards the maintenance of your team. Finally, we also take a very close look to food expenses, in particular, very expensive or unnecessary food. We understand that food is very important and in some cultures, not having any food for a project event would be frowned upon. That said, food requests are looked at critically by the evaluation team. For example, are you requesting breakfast and lunch for a four hour workshop when one meal would be appropriate? or, depending on the time of day, heavy snacks would be sufficient? Have you made a plan or a local partnership that would allow you to provide meals for a lower per person cost? Or if food is very expensive in your country, perhaps you consider planning for you and your project team to buy food at a local supermarket to cook or make packed lunches for participants. 
or perhaps you can even let participants know that lunch will be provided, but they should bring some additional snacks for themselves. Again, we understand food is important and people need to eat, but you want to make sure that your project does not appear that you are simply funding a feast with these grant funds. Finally, one last tip. Just because certain items are rarely approved does not mean that you can't incorporate them into your project through cost share. So if you and your project team really want those t-shirts, try to find a local sponsor who might contribute. Okay, let's do a final review and a few last tips. Request only what you need to implement your project. Asking for unnecessary items just to fill your budget and reach maximum funding does not look good to proposal evaluators. Your budget should be proportional to the project's impact. As an example, requesting $3,000 for a technology training for five high school students is not as competitive as requesting $1,500 for a public health workshop for 50 community members. In the first example, you are asking for $3,000 and for five beneficiaries. The second example asks for half that amount for 50 beneficiaries who would likely go on and spread that information to many more people in their community. Be thorough when considering your resource needs. If you forget something important, you'll have to pay for it or find another source for the funds. Do price research. Do not guess at the cost of the items in your budget. Be sure your budget tells the same story as your proposal. Before submitting, do a final review of your proposal and your budget to ensure they are telling the same story. If evaluators read in your proposal that your project will have 20 participants and five trainers, yet you are asking for food costs for 35 people, that does not tell the same story. Make sure your numbers line up. Be sure your budget is detailed. You want to show your math. Make sure that evaluators can see how you've arrived at the amount you are asking for. Check your math before submitting your budget. Make sure that your grant funds requested plus your cost share equal your total cost. Make sure all the items you're asking for add up to the appropriate amount in each column. All references to money in your grant proposal and budget should be converted from your local currency to US dollars. Everything you get for free should go into your budget as cost share with accurately researched costs of what you would have paid if you had had to pay for it. Change requests by the evaluation team should be expected. Your goal and the goal of this video is for you to submit such an amazing budget that we don't have to ask you to change anything. That said, change requests for grant budgets are a common part of the approval process. Very often, the budget that you request is not the budget that gets final approval. So please understand that changes should be expected. All right, I hope this video was helpful to you, but if you have any questions, we are here to help.